Coming up on 9 News Morning, 16 schools in Jefferson County are set to close. At the same time, another district has cut the number of schools it plans to close in half. Changes are coming to how students in Colorado learn social studies and U.S. history. And after months of controversy, minority and gay activists say they finally see themselves in the curriculum. And COVID and RSV cases are still rising. Experts are following the trends to see when the numbers could start falling again. Nine News Mornings starts right now. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us, the whole gang, here on a Friday morning. Yes. Kind of a chilly Friday morning. It Very is. chilly. Yeah. And it's going to be sticking around for a while, so yes. <clears throat> get used to it. <laughs> we have a little break for the weekend. We'll be 51 tomorrow, which is nice. Not bad. And then yeah. 40, so really, <laughs> Corey's been scowling at me for three days because of this weather forecast. Why did you do this to us, Ed? Not bad for Colorado like 75. in the wintertime. <laughs> yeah. it's not really, it's just late fall. So late fall, so, that's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then we're going to be in the 30s all next week. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? See? See how excited? Puffy coat times. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, it is right. puffy coat times. <laughs> so, well, there you go. I'm leaving the desk now because I'm not sure what will happen over here. But we do have the temperatures that will be cool today. Warm up a little for the weekend, but don't get used to it because then it's a cold week that will be coming our way. So as we take a look, we have some cloudy skies around here. 20 degrees. Yeah, there are a couple of snow showers in the area. Not really in Denver, but you see just to the south of the city, all the way to the southwestern portion of the state, that is snow and not going to last long. It's going to move out. We'll see mostly sunny skies and then tomorrow just high clouds drift across with the next system heading our way. So with those high clouds, it's a westerly kind of downslope flow. So we'll get into the 50s tomorrow. So here's the way the forecast goes. Mostly sunny today in your Veterans Day with 40 degrees. Then tonight we'll see 19 degrees with clear skies tomorrow. 51 degrees 47 on Sunday. Really not that bad a weekend, but take a look at Monday down to 35 degrees. Now we had snow showers on Tuesday high just 33 degrees and then on Wednesday partly sunny skies and will stay in those mid 30s. Ed, thank you so much. A look at your commute out here, dark and early on your Friday morning. This is our CDOT camera at I-70 and 270. Very, very light volume so far, at least along that camera and for what we're seeing across the metro right now, looking at a very green map. We do have that overnight bridge construction at this hour on westbound I-70. There's a right lane closed between Highway 58 and Colorado Mills Parkway until about 6 o'clock this morning. Doesn't really look to be impacting things at all at this hour. Hour. Southbound I-25, you're looking at a very quick drive between 144th Avenue and 76, under 10 minutes there. Both sides of 225 in the green as well. No delays between I-70 and I-25. Southbound I-25 between downtown and the Tech Center will take you just 14 minutes. And if you're getting ready to travel in the next few on I-70, between I-25 and 225, your drive both ways, 8 minutes or faster. Not too bad this morning, Erica. Thank you. The state's second largest school district is closing 16 schools. Jefferson County's Board of Education made it official last night. Now, news reporter Darius Johnson joins us in studio. And Darius, lots of reaction from parents on this decision. Hey there, Corey. Good morning. Yeah, we're hearing from parents who are both angry and frustrated. Many people had a chance to speak during open comment at last night's meeting. Some who spoke called the decision inequitable, unfair, and racist. The district has a capacity for up to 96,000 students. And right now just 69,000 are currently enrolled. After months of conversation behind closed doors, the district has decided to close 16 schools over the next two years. Now the district says these schools are underfunded and they aren't getting enough resources, so it's limiting students education. Parents say Title I schools were targeted and feel they didn't have a chance to really express their concerns to the district before this decision was made. Vivian Elementary is one of the schools on the closing list and here's what two parents from that school had to say. What I am asking you is that when you are in a position of power and privilege, that you spend that power and privilege with a lens focused on anti-racism and lifting up children who are the most vulnerable. Enrollment is down. Nothing has been done to try to solve that problem. Make the district more desirable or promote the amazing programs that might attract more students to our district. That's a failure. Again, a total of 16 schools will be closing, 15 of them closing next summer 2023 ahead of the next school year. The final school will close the following year during the summer of 2024, Corey. It is a tough situation. All right, Darius, thank you. 
Denver Public Schools is dealing with the same enrollment problem as Jeffco. The superintendent in Denver proposed closing 10 schools. But after feedback from angry parents and three board members saying they won't vote for the plan, he's cutting that list now in half, down to five. The schools are Denver Discovery School, Schmidt Elementary, Fairview Elementary, International Academy of Denver at Harrington, and Math and Science Leadership Academy. Superintendent Alex Marrero says that the schools required the most extra money to operate. The closure plan needs approval from the board, and it's not certain that's going to pass. The three board members who oppose the original plan say they're going to consider rescinding a direct that required the superintendent to look at closing any schools in the first place. A spokesperson with DPS says the other original five schools aren't completely off the table. He says they could be considered for closure next uh, and later, just not next week when the board is due to vote. DPS will hold a public comment session on Monday on this new plan. The board will vote on it next week. Starting next school year, there will be changes to how Colorado students learn state history and U.S. history. The law now requires teachers to include the contributions of minority groups. After more than a year of drafts and debate, the State Board of Education signed off on those standards yesterday. Now News reporter Jennifer Meckles walks us through the decision. Teach history, not After many fantasy. revisions, teach history, not many fantasy. chances to hear from teach the public, history. and after a year of work to meet the requirements of HB 19-1192, the State Board of Education has decided on new social studies standards for Colorado students. That passes four to three. The standards had to follow a 2019 law designed to include minority groups in civic and history education. When we can educate our young black and brown little kiddos that there's people that they can model after, that there are historical figures that have made significant contributions to this incredible country that we live in, it's gonna motivate all of us to be even better. In those minority groups, the LGBTQ community is mentioned at every grade level. Community members fought for that after an earlier revision cut them out. One Colorado, a statewide LGBTQ advocacy organization, calls this vote a win. And that's significant because we know that there has been this national effort to sort of remove the contributions and remove language um, around LGBTQ folks. Um, and that's just really damaging. And there were many parents and a few board members who feel the new standards go too far. I think they are anti-parent. They introduce items into discussion in schools that are sometimes age appropriate and sometimes not age appropriate. I think what we brought back in to the standards in general reflects most of what we heard from parents, from teachers, students that came to uh, the board meeting were sent us many, many letters. So I think it reflects the values of the, the individuals that provided us feedback. Jennifer Meckles reporting there. Each district will now use the guidelines to implement how they see it best. Board members say districts have to figure that out in time for new standards to take effect by next school year.